Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the one minute chart of Mt. Gox on BitcoinWisdom.com. Now we're trading at about 715. That's actually a very important price level. The reason why is because you can see, I pointed out on the blog, that 700 has become a very important price level. And you can see the volume that came in on this breakout move through 700. Now, the reason why 700 is an important price level, we'll go out to the 4-hour. And if you draw a trend line down, I don't have the tools here, but if you draw a trend line down from this top, down through this top, and this point here, and this point here, then this becomes a breakout point. Now, previously the breakout was 800, and you can see that we got close to it, turned around, and corrected. The reason why that number changes is because the trend is down and as we move further along in, in time, the price becomes lower until we get that trend change. So we have that trend change. That trend change is important because that establishes a bottoming formation. Now you can see here we have a crossover of the moving average coming in at almost the exact same time, a little bit after, but almost the exact same time as that 700 cross. Now that leaves up above us the 800 price and still a lot of resistance to work off, but this is very positive to see that type of breakout on significant buying volume. Now we have some correction here, but you can see that the volume of correction really isn't that much. So I'm expecting another large burst of volume to take us through the 730 price and then possibly we're going to make a run at the old highs. We have to wait and see. There could be a lot of backing and filling. If you go all the way out, you can see that there is a lot to work off. The last time we had a correction, we did not make it back to the last highs. We made it about halfway, we turned around and then had a massive rally. So it's quite possible that this is the end of this correction. It could correct down here to this $240 price, but it could also follow the past pattern and find strength and start moving from here and begin that move again towards four digits. Now I've been doing a lot of investigation into the altcoins. That's a very interesting play right now because when we had that move into new highs on Bitcoin there was a lot of interest that came into the altcoin. So I want to show you some interesting sites that I've come across here that are beneficial in trading the altcoins. The first one I want to look at is the Cripsy volume done in visual format. Now the way that this works is this is the 24 hour volume. So it's just calculated based on days. This bubble chart shows all trading pairs which are tradable on Cripsy with their total BTC volume over the last 24 hours. So you can see that doggy coin is number one. We know that Bitcoin's number one of course but that's not on here because that's what everything is crossed on. But doggy coin comes in number one. Litecoin is right behind it with quark coin. This I believe is unobtainium. That's a coin that has a very low number of coins. World coin, proto shares, mega coin, and uh, infinite coin, etc. So that's a very interesting visual to watch that as it changes day by day. It gets down to so small that you can't read it. So if you're interested, you can scroll down and see the list, the entire list of all the coins here. And you can see that when you get down to some of these very small altcoins, uh, here's one that I'm trading right now is the ASIC coin crossed over the Litecoin. You can see it's very tiny at just about five bitcoins. So the vast majority of these altcoins are just trading on a tiny volume of bitcoins, less than 10. There's just a few of the big ones here. 
Now another site that is very interesting to use, this is Coin Choose. This is one that I've found recently. And this site is interesting because you have the ability to list things in order of some of these criterion. So you can look and see, for example, the reward. And of course, DevCoin is at, at the top. GrandCoin, that's one that I've been building a position in. Freycoin, Feathercoin, etc. And that's by how many you're rewarded. Then you can look at the best price in BTC. And that's just going to tell you the highest price of the coin. You can see unobtainium is right there at the top. The profitability percentage in BTC, craft coin is at the top. Now you have to be careful about these because some of these are very spiky. So as we saw on coin wars, a lot of them can change positions very rapidly. You have to be careful on that. Now, the average hash rate, and we've lost the ability to click here, but we'll keep going. The average hash rate on these is going to be a little bit tricky because you have mega hashes and giga hashes and tera hashes. Bitcoin's actually going to be in the tera hash category. So you can see right here. Bitcoin is at 9041 tera hashes. Most of them come in at mega hashes, but the way this is interesting is that if you're looking at a coin, you can see how many miners are out there mining the coin. You have to remember that you also have to make the distinction between whether the coin is script or whether the coin is SHA-256. Coins that are SHA-256 are going to show a lot higher hash rate because that's just the nature of the way the coin is mined. Now let's look at the crypto coin charts info version 2. This is very interesting because again this is like the main site crypto coin charts. Let's do a refresh on this. It's going to be listed by total volume and this is going to be cross-referenced to Bitcoin so it's going to be total value of what markets are trading and that's going to be Bitcoin US dollar at the top Litecoin US dollar Bitcoin Chinese Yuan Litecoin Chinese Yuan etc so you can see that all the trading pairs or virtually all the trading pairs are going to be listed here and then you can drill down and get the charts and everything else some more inf interesting information so I wanted to show you the difference between a couple of coins here let's look at feather coin and that's FTC BTC and one of the fundamental factors that you may want to look at I'm not saying that that is a decisive indicator but it's just something to look at is this order book now you get a couple of figures here the whole bid volume and the whole ask volume now that can be somewhat deceptive because if the asks are way out on the far end or the bids are way out on the far end then that can skew it but generally this is a fairly fair indicator of how many coins are out there sitting above the market waiting to be sold and how many bitcoins are waiting under the market bidding for the coin and you can see a huge differential in feather coin and a flat price but the huge differential here in feather coin you have 321 bitcoins bidding in the order book and you have 2,640 Bitcoin value of Feather Coins on the ask. So a big discrepancy on the number there. Now, let's look at a coin that has a completely different breakdown. Uh, we'll look at Mega Coin, and that's MEC BTC. 
and you can see on Megacoin that you have this 12.18 BTC bid and 2.79 BTC ask. So a very, very large number of Bitcoins bidding on Megacoins. You can see when it breaks down into Megacoins, 18,000 Megacoins versus 3,400. Traditionally, one would say, based on fundamentals, that that is a very bullish sign for the coin. I don't know. I'm still experimenting and playing with all these factors to try to determine if that has any predictive value. Same thing with coin wars. The coin that is the most profitable to mine, is that going to be a bullish factor or a bearish factor? I don't know the answer to that question. We'll have to see. Now, I wanted to show you this blog. I think it's a very valuable blog because this guy is watching the coins as they come out and uh, he does the scam coin alerts uh, an article we posted on the blog who the hell's buying doggy coin and uh, he's looking at the premium versus the number of coins that are out there so when you're looking at fundamentals you always have to look at how many coins are out there now that's not absolutely conclusive because we've seen with doggy coin he says here the silliest coin to ever pierce the 10 million market cap barrier and I believe that doggy coin is a hundred billion coins when we look on the volume I think it traded as many as a hundred million today but this is a valuable site because he does some analysis as far as whether he believes it's a scam coin and that's something that you have to do the homework for yourself you have to do your own due diligence you have to look and see how many coins potentially can be mined now if we go to coin wars actually if we go to coin market cap This is probably the best site to see the total supply. Some of these I couldn't find the total supply, but you can see it varies drastically. You can see that there's a 6 billion total supply for DevCoin. And let's look at, uh, here's Megacoin here with 21 million. So you can see that's a Bitcoin clone exactly the same million quark is here with about 10 times that amount and I think the one that we were looking at was unobtainium that was one that was up there in the other charts we were looking at you see that a tiny a hundred and seven thousand you can see the price there per coin is up at twelve dollars and fifty six cents a coin so these are all the factors that you have to look at if you're looking at fundamentals. Now we had a coin here yesterday that I pointed out. It was NXT and that coin was actually came in fifth on the market cap. It's not listed today and that's a coin that's traded only on one exchange. That's an exchange you have to sign up for. There were a lot of red flags around that coin and now I see it's not listed on cryptocurrency market cap so I don't know what that means but it actually went up to fifth you have to understand that if you're doing a coin and you want to lock up a certain amount of the shares that fits in with the way they used to do stock offerings in the old days when the markets were completely controlled by the stock jockeys and what they would do is they would lock up a very very large percentage this is something that Jesse Livermore did when he was a stock operator they'd lock up a very very large percentage of the stock that was out there with the insiders putting them in a trust and agreeing not to trade them on the market then having the amount of shares that are traded on the market be very very tiny and using that they could drive up the market cap I believe that's probably why NXT reached number five on the market cap but again, if a coin isn't traded 
on one of the major exchanges where people can't value that coin in terms of other coins I would be very very wary of that coin currently that's where NXT is so a very very interesting day with the potential breakout through this downtrend line 700 is the current marker we're gonna see if we correct back and go back up we may back and fill for a while but based on the longer term charts it looks like this is the beginning of a significant rally to new highs we'll just have to wait and see and we'll talk to you next time